Somehow I woke up out in Beverly Fucked up, smelling like that bourbon And I had a balloon I'm not sure Yeah, the girls seem polite in the club every night That's how it goes when you Hollywood person What well, going on people, Lumini here back again with another episode of the Sunderland Save here on my channel. We start things off by seeing that Joe Gelhart and Etienne Green have both been called up to the England national squad, which is pretty huge for us to have two England internationals in the team. Also Christian Gunter finding his way into the Germany setup. So three new internationals for us, that's pretty cool. Uh, Ukraine have asked us to manage them. I am going to look at managing a national team. However, I don't think at the minute it's going to be Ukraine. We have started the season off okay. We've got two wins, two draws and two losses, leaving us on eight points. Um, in this episode, we play Fulham, Newcastle, Manchester United and Everton. So another tough run but like i said pretty much every game now is going to be tough uh but yeah the team started off decently well we obviously added a lot of bodies to the squad as we needed to but all there is left to do in this one is get into the first game of the episode up against Fulham. We'll, well, I think we'll know nice that by the time this team. episode comes out. Denying Congo, though, they're back to just on the map. Jao Polina is still here. It's a good team. Furek Pereira and Steffi Mavadidi with Vinicius leading the line. No Mitrovic anymore. Gabi Adini, Oliver Torres, Villalabra, Juanmi well, all on the bench. So investing heavily lineup. in the Spanish lads. Well, we know lineup. our lineup. The, wing backs break forward, the back the five that has been working better for us. Well, what a start to the season. They've been exciting to watch. They've trying been to find Joe Gelhart in the box. Oh, Joe Hel Gelhart does get ahead to it, and it comes off the Manor outside of the, the post. And Babu is Moving recovering. Denier coming purpose. across as well. But That's a, a bad ball there, though. Oh, Lays it across to Diallo. Game. Gets a shot. It falls back to Stewart, but Ross can't get a strike on it. His touch isn't good enough. Ross Stewart going to leave it across his body. And strike one. Oh, Ross Stewart. What a hit. Ross Stewart proving that he can most definitely be a Premier League goal scorer. What a strike into the top corner that is by Ross. Let the ball run across his body beautifully. And Babu couldn't recover to get back across in front of him. And Ross Stewart blasts one. Five goals and seven matches now for Ross. Pereira goes out wide to Onoma. Zerkin doesn't deal with it. It's going to go to Furich. McCallum's there. What has just happened between Etienne Green and McCallum? I don't know what I've just seen. McCallum gets the ball. I tell him to clear it. He leaves it for Etienne Green. Etienne Green then slides over the ball. And it's a free shot for Vinicius. That is disgustingly bad defending. Which is not something I like to see too often. I'm trying to chip this one through to Ross Stewart. Oh, takes the shot quickly because Denier was coming in to press him. Luckily for Fulham, it's a good save from Bernd Leno. Going to swing this one in towards McCallum at the near post. Fortunately, it's headed away. Uh, Brownhill, that's not where I wanted you to pass the ball. Jason Denier is going to try and break forward with it. He's going to have to go back to Augustinson. And that is going to be half time. A big defensive mistake gives Fulham a free goal going into half time. I think we've probably been better than Fulham, but we haven't taken advantage as much. And there comes that Fulham press we've been talking about. Gunter wins a header inside to Gerhardt. We'll go back to Gunter. Just a quick reminder we have Gunter makes some headway here. It's Sunderland Diallo. taking on Newcastle United. Ross Stewart. He's already hit one and he's going to hit another one. Our man up top, our talisman. I can't see the celebration. There we go. Ross Stewart puts us back in the lead once again. Well, 
well, here it is again, and it's a superbly weighted through ball to break it's that a good line. bit of play to find the extra man as usual. And then a good, actually, a very good drip, bit of dribbling from Ross Stewart just to jink across the defenders so the to match. find the space to strike Who one. Like? Babu making a Babu. little run forward here now. A good work from Reese Oxford. But like I said, the press is on again. But this time we do break it. Ross Stewart's got to run down the wing here. If Denier comes far enough across, we will have Gelhar in space and we will be able to wrap up points. That might be ambitious to say now, but in my feeling with how things are going, I think we probably have wrapped up the three well, points the for ourselves and there. Denier does come all the way across. That's Joe Gelhart is in space. That's only his second goal of the season. Well, they've been getting to Nelson Semedo coming off. He does have to do a lot of hard work up and down that wing, Nelson Semedo, so I'm not often surprised that his fitness doesn't really uh, maintain. I actually do think Issa Diop is playing in that midfield role. Callum gets across, Mavadidi into Jao Paulinha. We're playing all those little passes that I hate so much, but it's a good save by Etienne Green at the end of it. That's Sergio Roberto. Is Sergio Roberto on for Pereira, of all players? That's a good bouncing shot. Etienne Green had to do enough to get behind it. Jao Paulinha doesn't do anything with that, and Colwell will come away with that. This might be ideal for the counter. McCallum's going to run forward with this one. The Hood into Richards. We do know that Richards has got pace and has got space, but it's a good hand round the post. Joe Gelhart. Gelhart's going to go to Lerma. Back to Gelhart. He's going to strike one to the near post. You would expect. The, but Leno should be saving that. And he does get a big hand to it. Josh Brown had to swing one in late on here. Levi Colwell gets his head to it and it's cleared off the line. And play it to the edge of the box. So Gelhart is blocked. Brown is going to have one last cross of the ball here. It's actually well, a very good cross, but cross Ross Stewart did not gamble yeah, on it. Tries opposition. to nick it off Diop, but doesn't go. And Babu will come forward with that. And you'd imagine so that is the end of the game. And it is a 3-1 road win for Sunderland. Piling more misery on the London club, who are currently still sat bottom of the table with only one point. Ross Stewart having a big performance for us. Hasn't performed quite as well as that, I don't think, in the last couple. But that is a big, big performance from Ross Stewart. Two goals. And they're a direct relegation rival. So to get a win like that over them is huge. You know what that means as well. It means that Ross Stewart will be earning himself in inform it will be there it's something we've become common uh not common become used to seeing from ross stewart is him getting informed so i thought he may struggle a little bit more this season got a little youth scout update um don't be too hard on yourself let's take a look and see if any of the boys are ready to come up logan anderson at 60 i am tempted i think i'm going to hold off just for now Alistair Christie and Ben Kennedy also may be getting called up soon. I'm going to hold off on calling any of them up for now just because I don't want to rush them too much. I think that letting them have a bit of extra time would be helpful. That win does see us go up into ninth place. We're actually currently above Arsenal and Newcastle. Newcastle, who we play next in the first time we're derby. Do before we get into that though, have some monthly scout reports to come back. So we'll see. We've got Oliver Bell here who's looking decent. Uh, not too many guys on the Scottish side of things looking overly impressive. I think we'll call up Alistair Nicholl. Besides from that, I think we'll leave these guys for now see what else we can find out about them what the English lads saying pretty slim crop from the English lads last time and it looks like we're gonna have much the same here David Wright can come up 
Right, David Wright, another goalkeeper, not looking as promising as obviously uh, Logan Aniston Anderson, who we already have in there. So nothing from him yet. Alistair Nichols, a right back slash centre back, only five eight, definitely won't be playing centre back for me though. Uh, did we just call up Declan Hall? We may have done. I don't remember him from before, but I also wasn't looking properly, so. Who knows? Oliver Bell was another one. He is a striker, five foot nine. Trying to kind of look for more Ross Stewart type players, if you know what I mean. But a couple boys there, like I said before, that look like potentially soon they may be getting called up. Patrick Roberts' position change has come in. I did decide to change him to a cam just because at the moment we're not really managing to utilize him at all in the team. I don't think he'll be much help to us in those winger roles, obviously, because we're not using wingers right now. So I have put him to a cam. He goes up to a 72. Like I said, I'm not 100% certain yet as to whether we're going to, going to be renewing his contract or not. Um, it's one of those things that we're kind of waiting to see whether we need to or not. Um, but at the moment, we'll put him in that camera so that we can use him as and when is necessary. Right, big game time. Tide where Derby, ninth versus 10th, both on 11 points. Of course, before this one, we have a press conference to do. So let's get it done and let's get into this game. I'm excited. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the press conference. Let's get started whenever you're ready. Your first time where Derby as manager of Sunderland. Can you let us know how you're feeling going into this one? It's a fixture I've been looking forward to since I agreed to take over at Sunderland. I've wanted to really feel the atmosphere as a manager. I've wanted to get into the middle of this rivalry and stake our claim for being the best out of the two teams in the Derby. Um, we know Newcastle were a quality side. We know what they bring and what they've got in their team and the players that they have they've really helped them grow into a challenging Premier League side um, but I have confidence we've game planned very well for them I think we know them pretty well uh, we've studied them a lot I personally have studied them a lot even when we're in the championship and I think we're at, we're ready to add our own little bit of history to this derby in this up and coming game. A big 3 1 win over Fulham sees you coming into this one on good form. Will that help you in the derby? Momentum is huge in football, and um, I think we've really used it well so far this season when we've hit streaks. We've been managing to continue rolling. So going into this game, the a derby game as big as it is, we're off off of the back of that win against Fulham, sorry. Um, we couldn't have asked for more coming into this game, really. We couldn't have asked for better preparation and a more positive atmosphere around the ground and around the uh, training ground. You've outperformed expectations so far early on in the season. Can you talk to us a little bit about the factors <coughs> contributing to helping you do that? You have to say it would be down to us. We got our recruitment right. Um, we've managed to put together a squad of lads that play well together, play for each other, show passion for the club, and they're really performing well right now. You see when things glue, it took a little bit of a long time at the beginning of the season. First couple of games you could see there was it wasn't quite clicking in some areas, but I think we're now starting to hit that area where things are starting to click together. We're starting to see partnerships form we're starting to see understandings form and yeah i think the boys just really have knuckled down hard and really worked hard to get our tactics under wrap and worked hard together and they bonded great as a team so yeah it really comes down to the recruitment and the atmosphere and characters that we have in the dressing room i couldn't ask for a better squad right now to be fair thanks guys that'll be it for today let's get into this one obviously newcastle's gonna have a quality team so it's gonna be tough well, what a game we have in store for you today. The hype has been building all week and the fans are pouring into the stadium. The tension palpable. We'll have every kick of the ball for you live on EA TV. At home for the first time where the season. So they 
Take a look at the Newcastle lineup. Nick Pope still in goal. Trippier, Lascelles, Burn, and Dummett at the back. Dummett is interesting. Alex Buena, Longstaff, Guillermez, Bouladia, Ishak, and Elliot Anderson. Not as many big names as I thought. They do have Silas Wamanga Tuka on the bench. Well, there's Chris Wood. He's a known goal scorer, but we've got Ross Stewart for this result. Well, this result, this fixture, should I say. Diallo! Oh! Ahmed Diallo almost starts this one off with an absolute wonder goal. Nick Pope, I don't think we're sure. It just didn't dip quick enough. Ahmed Diallo almost starting this one off super fast and spectacularly. Chip one down the wing here. Gunter is there. Oh, it's not Crossing good work from Gunter though. Bula Dia finds Isaac. Alexander Ishak who chips and it up and takes a shot. Etienne Green is equal to it though. Now Vertsen is on the run. Going to bring it down. Oh, Vertsen! Vertsen's going to get it back into Gunter. He's going to look for Ross Stewart! Ross Stewart with a huge goal in the time where Derby! You knew if something was going to happen in this game that this man was going to have an impact and he gives us a lead. What a cross as well from Christian Gunter. Places it on his head beautifully. There's almost no way from that area that Ross Stewart can miss. He's completely by himself. One-on-one -on -one with Nick Pope with the header. Ross Stewart gets his seventh goal of the season. Going to go back to Serkin here. And now it's Gunter. We need to slow the pace down a little bit. Because this ball, this ball, this game's become a little bit hectic. Good switch there from Brownhill to find some Ado. The Hood. Oh, almost chips through Vertsen, but we'll find the ball back to Nelson Samedo who picks out a cross, but Dan Byrne is there to meet it. The Hood. Going to look for the same Vertsen. Vertsen here. Into Samedo. Samedo is going to find a very good ball cross to Amadiello. Ross Stewart completely mishits the shot. It's a sweeping attack from us forward. But Ross Stewart just does not do enough with it. Poor shot from Ross. Ishak now trying to get a late attack. Anderson. Anderson, but it will so be Sunderland whistle, going in, having the end. better the half the and the lead in the derby. Well, Big the start from us. Alexander Ishak we have Look. kept him quiet so far. And if we are going to win this game, we're going to have to continue to keep him quiet. The problem is, however, Reese Oxford is going to have to come off here. Nelson oh, Semedo's header doesn't make it past the midfield Isak. though. Now Isak coming forward. Bruno Guimaraes. Longstaff. Longstaff's going to hit one and from long, but Etienne Green can pick that one off. Good play it in. Ross Stewart making a run in behind Dan Byrne, however, can't quite. That's an absolute wipeout there. I, think most from, would I don't know who it was. Longstaff. Just enough to put him off. Longstaff beats um, Brownhill to the ball, but Brownhill managed to keep on to it. Stewart's going to go out to Brownhill here. Rolls it across! What a ball across that is! And Amadiello, the man who's come in to play this cam role for us, having been one of our most creative players out wide, has found his goal scoring boots. They let Brownell have the ball for far too long. The sales doesn't close the angle. He's trying to pass the Vertsen, but it's Diallo who runs in on the end of the ball. It's a shot. It's a little dummy from Vertsen, which is beautiful to let the ball run to Ama Diallo. We are 2 0 up in the derby. Diallo rolls around the corner. Ama Diallo! It's going to be his last action of the game after scoring the second goal. Amadiello does just put it over the bar. Richards here. We'll find Semedo. Stewart's free in the middle. Ross Stewart puts it wide. Two minutes left. Silas making his run. Going to try and find Ishak. Ishak shot in a poor one though. Etienne Green will hold on to this just for the last couple. 
and throw it out to Christian Gunter. And that will be a huge, huge win for Sunderland in the derby. We do walk out 2-1 winners in our first time where derby. We have beaten our rivals. That is massive for us. Absolutely massive performance. Ross Stewart with a goal and Ahmad Diallo with a goal. Ross Stewart probably should have had more than one goal though, to be honest. But I can cannot be happier to walk away with a win in that one. And to be honest, I think personally, though Ross Stewart could get it, I think it's either between Christian Gunter or Ahmed Diallo. I know Josh Brownhill won for his work in midfield, but I don't think that was quite inform worthy. The cross from Gunter, however, was definitely inform worthy, and I think it is going to be Christian Gunter I go for. So that will be Christian Gunter's first inform of the season. The big win in the derby sees us hop up to eighth place in the table. We are flying high currently. Next up, though, we do have a very big test coming up against Manchester United. So we may crash back down to reality. It luckily for us also is only a bruised shoulder for Reese Oxford. So he will be back with us in five days. So next up, we have Manchester United, Amadiello's former team. They currently sit in fifth place in the table only a point above us but obviously it's going to be a very very difficult match i imagine that this united side have got a whole lot of quality in their starting lineup we are away at old trafford for this one so it's going to be a very a tough to match will he shine against his former club we're live next so don't go anywhere like i said i'm a Diallo's former team it's going to be an interesting game. Obviously, the first top six sides, first two top six sides that we played, we did lose to. But in the Chelsea game, we definitely played well enough to get points. And the Arsenal game, obviously Arsenal right now are struggling. So they're not currently a top six side, but they obviously still do have the quality to be cool. David De Gea in net. Brandon Williams, Victor Lindelof, Lissandro Martinez and Tyrell Molassi at the back. Milinkovic, Savage, Casemiro in the midfield too with Anthony Eriksson. Jose Gaia in the attacking positions. Marcus Rashford and Usman Dembele on the bench. Well, João Pedro, Tony Cruz and Jordi Alba. Like I said, a lot of quality. Oh. Again, another poor pass out of defence, putting us under unnecessary pass. pressure. Anthony's going to go for a goal here, and back heel it to Ericsson, and it's going to be 1-0 United. To be fair, we do deserve to go 1-0 down, because we have not dealt with the ball in these defensive areas very well at all. That is something you would never see, though, as Ronaldo's celebrating with his teammates. <laughs> it's a good back heel from Anthony. You would have to say that maybe... Reese Oxford should do a bit better at getting out to Ericsson faster. Brownhill into the feet of Gellhart. It's a very good ball to Gellhart. We can send Ross Stewart on the run. Amad Diallo into the hood. And we will equalise. It's a good sweeping counter-attack from us. And Mahmoud the hood gets us back on level terms. Making a good gut-busting run from that midfield area. Given us the over, the extra player over, sorry, is what I was trying to say. Good work from Ross Stewart to find Ahmad Diallo inside, and then Ahmad Diallo can roll it across to Dahoud, who can smash into that far corner. David De Gea was going back across the other side. We are back on level terms. That's a poor ball from Casemiro there. What I've just seen there. There's a weird press that I didn't actually ask for, and we are going to concede. That is a little suspect. A lot of our players there just rushed up. And I'm not really sure why. Because we're not playing on that higher press. I mean, you could see McCallum, Serkin and Oxford were all out of position. Because they all pushed up. Oh, it's a good bit of play from us again though. But the shot isn't a great one from Ahmad to be fair. I don't know what he's thinking there. Serkin getting across on Anthony, and Serkin is going to fall over. Interesting. Well, 
Circuit falling over, putting the challenge in on Anthony. That is embarrassing from you, Dennis. Sort it out. We do go in 2 1 down, which I'm not too disappointed with because United have been better than us for spells. Kind of step his game up a little bit because he hasn't been particularly good. That's a very good run from Ross Stewart. That's a very good save from David De Gea. Anthony. Oh, good ball through. That's a great save, Etienne Green there as well. With Usman Dembele coming on, that is going to cause us a hell of a lot of problems on this wing, I think. Now there's Maida running behind and finds Anthony with a great ball. That kind of just is what it is, I guess. Anthony finishes off another opportunity. And now they're playing the ball back to him very well. Yeah, that's disappointing, but it's the quality difference, you can see it. Levi Colwell probably should do better. I don't know why Sam McCallum is trying to block the ball from so far away. A 3-4-0 four, four loss. How have we not got that ball out? Yeah, 4-1. We're definitely better than 4-1. We don't deserve a 4-1 loss, but... I think we just lost our way a little bit. The 2-1, I think, was unfortunate. Like, how quickly they managed to get through us there. That's a good ball into Ross Stewart. Can he at least get us a consolation? He can. So, Ross Stewart makes it 4-2. Won't pick up the ball for some reason. Conceding as quickly as we did with some of the goals. So, yeah, ends up in a 4-2 loss. It is what it is. I would have rather lost this game and won the derby like we did then the other way around so yeah we will take that loss they were better than us so uh the loss sees us still stay in eighth place currently we've got one more game left this episode against everton so we will do the training after seeing what these chats are all right last game of the episode we do have northern ireland asking us to take over again not really one that i'm interested in currently i don't i'm i don't know i'm kind of of the opinion of wherever i end up Managing internationally, we'll send a scout out and try and build like a new little team as well as having some decent players around as well. The man of the moment, he's been in terrific Ross Stewart, the four goals in the last four three. Goals in three games. Stay with us. If we can get Ross Stewart passing a bit better, he is genuinely going to be one of the most dangerous strikers in the league, I believe. But like I say, I feel like at the moment, even in the Prem, if we are at our best, we have a good chance of taking points off of anybody. I do genuinely feel that. The top teams, obviously, it's always going to be tougher. They are, they've got more quality than us in the starting 11s, but also coming off the bench, which is always makes it more difficult. But I think... I do still believe that we can probably take points off of anyone. Not as strong a Everton lineup as I was expecting. Gerard Moreno and James Tavernier on the bench, as well as Amadou and Nana. Maybe underestimating us a little bit as we're not getting their strongest lineup. The attack continues. They're Diallo. making considerable progress. See if we can find Ross Stewart up. here. Oh, what a finish, Ross! I actually was not expecting him to finish that at all. I thought he overran it and it was going to get nicked away, but he does manage to come back and swing a leg at it. Little chip over from Ahmed Diallo. Defenders don't deal with it. It's a difficult ball for them to deal with, to be fair. It just goes over their head. And then Ross Stewart swings a big leg at it. You have to ask if the keeper's done enough there, because it's not a particularly powerful shot. So who's broken through here and has a chance to shoot. Yeah, Virginia's going to knock it straight up. But does it manage to catch it. Broadhead is not having a good time on this side, I have to be honest. It and is going to be a 1 0 lead for Sunderland going into half time against Everton in this one. Um, I'd probably say we've been pretty comfortable in this one so far. That is a great bit of play there as well. We'll wait for the Allies to take a bit more of a run. It does cut inside here. The Hood. Oh, it's a great bit of hold up play from Amad Diallo. And it's a great bit of play from front to back from the Sunderland lads. Good bit of defence from Levi Colwell. Holds it up perfectly. 
And then Ahmed Diallo just patient enough with the step over to keep the defence off balance. Could have rushed it to Joe Gelhart, but instead waits for the run for Mamou Dahoud. Mamou Dahoud blasts it into the back of the net. We have a 2 0 lead. DCL is still just so isolated in this Everton side. Diallo. It's no help at all. On the scent of something positive. Let's do it. Really nice. the shoulder. Goes for the header. That is such poor goalkeeping from Jao Virginia there. Ross Stewart gets his second of the game. But Jao Virginia really has to be looking in the mirror there. Because you cannot. You cannot be letting that goal go in. It's not even a particularly powerful header from Ross Stewart. It's a good chip ball over the top. He just redirects it back across the keeper to the far side. And it bounces in off the inside of the post. That's 10 goals now, I'm pretty sure, for Ross Stewart. To Ishmael Asar, Levi Colwell has got his work cut out for him. Ishmael Asar cuts it across to Nathan Broadhead. And Everton will get themselves a goal here. It is late, so you wouldn't imagine that it's going to mean too much. But at least it's something for Everton. Deli Ali has had two different haircuts in this game so far. Well, let's look at this again, Derek, because he's had short hair, and now you can see there, so he's got dreads there, again. He Why did that go there? Levi Colwell goes the out, making broad head up against Tomato now. And across one in. Oh, Shmeda Sar gets a... What? No, come off it. That's such a stupid goal. Goals like that literally don't make any sense. I tell Colwell to clear it, but instead, Etienne Green slides his feet, so then he it ends up bobbling into the back of the net. I mean, this didn't deserve to be 3-2. Everton have been battered. They got The one counter-attack, I will admit, was a good goal. But this, that second goal... Absolute cheese from EA. Brownhill. Dahoud. Can he convert? Ah, oh, but we're going to make it 4 2 with a beautiful Ahmad Diallo finish. And he goes to that B celebration once again. He loves using that B celebration. It's a good finish. I mean, we've deserved more goals, to be fair. We just have. We've been all over Everton, but that is a great finish from Ahmed Diallo. Off of another, back of another great bit of play, just steps inside here. Doesn't get close fast enough, curls one into the far corner. Jao Virginia's had an absolute mare in goal. And that is going to be the end of the game there. 4-2 win for Sunderland to round off the episode, inflicting the defeat that we took against United to Everton. Jao Virginia... I can't believe... Was he their starting goalkeeper? Is Pickford just not there or something? I didn't mean to do, go back on here. Yeah, is Pickford just, like... Does he not play for them anymore? Do they not have... They have better players. So, again, it's a wonder why they weren't playing them. Maybe they're tired. Pickford is on the bench, yeah. I think they just underestimated us, to be honest. Played a backup side against us. Hey, if you're going to underestimate us, then you deserve to get slapped. But that is going to see us walk away with another W. I think that Amadiello has been shortchanged here. He assisted all the other goals and scored one himself. But Ross Stewart and Mamou Dahoud and Tomato have been given better re ratings than him. Me personally, I'm giving the inform to Ama Diallo because for three assists and a goal, there's absolutely no way that you don't deserve to be acknowledged as the man of the match for that one, in my opinion. That win will see us back up into eighth place over Newcastle. We do have now a little bit of a gap over them as well. But yeah, that is going to be where this episode wraps up. We do finish the episode in eighth. So we're having an unexpectedly good start to our first season in the Premier League. But yeah, that's where we're going to leave it. Please like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell to get that far about when the next episode is available to you. And I hope to see you in it. Peace.